Good day, and welcome to the fifth episode of the For the Win Force Technique Workshop. My name is Gabriel Quenneville, and I'm the Reconditioning Specialist for the Canadian Armed Forces out here at Base 4 in Cold Lake. I'm a Clinical Exercise Physiologist certified through the Canadian Society of Exercise Physiology. If you haven't seen the previous four episodes, go ahead and find them linked in the description below, where we cover how to leave the center lines and the turnaround lines for the rush component of the force test, as well as approaching the center line. Today, we'll be covering how to approach the turnaround line of the rush component of the force test, and it's gonna be very similar to approaching the center line. So what I'm gonna to do today is just show you the differences and recommend that you watch the previous video on the center lines to get the progressions that you'll need to be working on. What we're gonna do after that is I'm gonna go outside and we'll do a little test to see which techniques are actually better and why I recommend the techniques that I am recommending today. If you plan on using my techniques when you're doing the rush component of the force test, there is one major difference when you're approaching the turnaround line versus when you're approaching the center line of the rush component of the force test. With that, there's gonna be two minor changes to the progressions that we worked on last week. That video is linked in the description below. So instead of remaking the video again with just the two minor changes, I'm gonna go through them briefly right now and I recommend that you go and check out last week's video and incorporate those into to the progression and work your way up that progression as you would the center line. The major difference is where you want to be when you're doing your hand release. The protocol states that your body must be perpendicular to the line and your hands and shoulders must be on or behind the line when you do your hand release. So we know that when we're approaching the center line, we want to get up and keep moving forward. So with that progression, I recommended that we do our hand release on the line. When we're approaching the turnaround line, however, we want to get up, turn around, and change directions. So why not start moving in that direction when we're getting down into our hand release? The protocol says that our hands and shoulders must be on or behind the line. So let's choose the behind the line option. As we go down to uh, touch the line with our foot, and then we swing our body back into the hand release position. Let's be as far away from that line as possible so that we can get up and start running back in the direction that we want to be. So the first minor change that is going to happen in the progression starts at, starts at progression number four. If you remember, progression number four from last week is standing tall. We're going to go in and touch that line in a sidestep or a Kozak squat. And then we're going to reach our hands down towards the line. The change is going to be where we're reaching our hands. We're going to reach our hands towards that back foot. So in the first part of progression number four, we come in here and then come down to the ground. Then, as you get more comfortable with that, you're going to swing your foot in and come down in one swift movement. Once you're comfortable with that, feel free to move past that progression to the next progressions, where we're adding the second minor change in uh, this technique. As you're walking or running uh, or sprinting, approaching that line, you always want to be touching the floor near that back foot, so that when you pivot behind, you're going to be further away from that line. The second change is that you have the option to actually slide your body back as you do your hand release, which I'll demonstrate right here. We're going to walk, run, or sprint into the line depending on what progression you're on. You're going to come in, touch that line, hands towards that back foot. Then as you swing your foot back behind your body, push your body back and do your hand release here. Then come back up and do either your foot pivot or your knee pivot. So that's it for this progression. Nice, short, and quick video. So I decided let's go outside and really test this technique. And welcome to my backyard. Please don't make fun of how patchy my grass is. This is a safe space, uh, no judgment. Okay, so what are we doing here? Well, the first thing that I wanna do is I wanna show you guys how the technique of touching from standing up, coming down, and then jumping your feet forward before you turn around is going to be slower than the technique that I'm recommending, either using the foot pivot or the knee pivot. Now, let's just say in a hypothetical situation where from the time you touch the line to the time you get back up, both techniques are exactly the same speed. Well, what I'm arguing is that using my technique with either the foot pivot or the knee pivot is actually going to be more beneficial even if the length of time taken is the same because we're actually traveling in the direction that we want to go. 
So I have my two shoes here that are going to help me out to visually explain to you guys how this technique is going to be faster. So let's say we're coming here, touching, coming down, doing our hand release by the mat and then jumping our feet forward. Well, my first step is going to be here. So I'm going to take my shoe and this is where my starting position is. Now let's say we do my technique incorporating either the knee or the foot pivot. I prefer the foot pivot, so that's what I'm gonna do here in this example, and using uh, the foot touch that I was explaining earlier in this video. So we're coming in, touching, doing our hand release back here, and then coming up and doing our foot pivot. I'm starting my run here. So oh, let's grab the shoe, place that here. So what I'm arguing here is that this is the equivalent of doing a 10 meter maximal sprint race with one person starting here and one person starting here, going in that direction. We know that if you're running the same speed, the person with about the one to two meter head start is probably going to win that race. So even if from the time you touch the line to the time you get back up, even if that is the same speed, regardless of the technique you're using, my technique is more favorable for this reason. All right, hello everyone. So what we're gonna do right now is we're actually gonna analyze two different techniques. Over here on the left side, what we're going to be analyzing is me jumping down and jumping back up using that jump down, jump up technique. And over here, we're gonna do the foot pivot technique where I pivot in and I pivot out. And what we're looking for is the difference in speed between the two. You can see I stopped the frame at the same point where my, uh, my foot my left foot is on the last touch before my right foot comes in to touch that line. So as you remember from the video, the imaginary line is right here at the edge of my yoga mat. Uh, and let's just see what happens. So we're going to move through that first frame here. As we move through, we can see if we stop here, the foot touches at virtually the same time on both sides. So how am I getting faster using the foot pivot technique? Well, what you'll notice here is look how low my chest is and how my arms are already reaching for the floor versus the jump up, jump down technique. My chest is high, meaning it's having to travel a lot further to get down to the floor. So that's what we'll notice first. It's only saving us a little bit of time, but that every little bit counts because we know that we do this three times during the test. So even if it's 20 milliseconds, that's 60 milliseconds overall for the entirety of the test, just by improving your technique and not even needing to improve our fitness. So let's continue going through this. We can see that as I come down slowly onto the ground uh, using my foot pivot technique, I'm already on the ground here and here I'm still in the air. So that's the one difference. The other difference is how far my hands are not from the line. So we know that we want to go the opposite direction. We want to run towards the right. On my foot pivot technique here, I am well further away from that line than I am here on my jump up, jump down technique. And that's what's saving us a lot of time. But where we save the most time is with that foot or knee pivot technique, which is coming up right here. As I'm coming up on that right side, slightly in front of what I'm doing on the left side, just because getting down is a little bit faster as we saw, where I'm really winning is here. You can see how with that foot pivot, I'm already facing forwards, whereas with the jump up, jump down technique here, I'm still facing back. So I still haven't even turned around yet. The next thing I wanna draw your attention to is that distance here where that front foot is from that imaginary line. So on my foot pivot technique, my front foot is significantly further away from that imaginary line that I drew with my yoga mat, meaning that I'm only gonna to have to take one additional step to get out of this frame. I'm that much closer to getting to the center line for my next touch and up. Whereas here, you're gonna see that I'm gonna to have to take two additional steps. And that's where that foot pivot technique really is that game changer versus that jump up, jump down technique. So I'm gonna draw your attention to that right screen right here, where we're gonna see how as I draw forwards, we do one step and I'm out of the frame. And here I've done my first step, I'm still in the frame. 
Let's go back, draw your attention to that left side now. So that first step, still in the frame. Second step, still in the frame. Third step, out of the frame. Such a difference here from that foot pivot technique where one step I'm already out of the frame. Here I'm needing to take two, here I'm needing to take three, and then I'm out of the frame. So hopefully this is enough proof to uh, substantiate why that foot pivot technique is so much faster. Hopefully you can start working through those progressions and start improving the rush component of force test.